vacation in school today, but when the teacher asked us about how our families came here, I didn't know what to say. Well, your ancestors came here a long time ago, when Canada was just confederating as a country. But it's a really long story, and I don't want to bore you with it. I'm staying. I want to know. Well, the first big wave of Chinese people first came here in 1858. The Canadian government relied on Chinese contractors to build trails, wagon roads, drain swamps, and dig ditches. They came to Pan for gold in British Columbia. Most of the migrants were young landless men from the province of Guangdong in southern China. They were lured in by the gold fever. Also, they were escaping the harsh conditions in China such as famine, internal rebellions, population pressures, and the threat of Western colonialism. But they weren't treated fair and they faced a lot of harsh treatment. You're not even working right. Honestly, you guys just came here and took all the jobs. Your work isn't precise, it's sloppy. With your handiwork, British Columbia is going to be a wreck. What was that all about? Didn't you hear? The Caucasians are blaming the Chinese for taking away their jobs. But how's that fair? We're just answering the government's request. They brought the Chinese contractors and on-site workers here because of the shortage of labor. Yeah, we're just doing our job, digging trails and wagon roads. But still, it's nice to get out of the internal rebellion and family back home. It is, but I'm worried about a family back home and how they are hoping. I know, hopefully the money we make here is enough because I'm, spend, I'm sending most of my money there anyways. Don't know why it's so much harder for us and why they're treating us so harshly. Yeah, we have a lot of challenges to face in this new country. Years went on with the Chinese workers being treated harshly. The gold rush in British Columbia ended in 1865, but the Chinese contractors had more coming. After many discussions with the Legislative Assembly, we have come to a conclusion. On behalf of the Legislative Assembly, I announce the right to disfranchise the Native Americans and the Chinese. Wait, how is that right? We are as much of a citizen as they are. Yeah, and as a citizen of this country, we should have the right to vote. It's just more discrimination. First it was the community because our people took away their jobs. Now they just made it official. This country sure has a way of treating us. Anyways, how's your family? I guess they're fine. I haven't been able to see them. And I wish I could go see them, but you know I can't afford that. In 1879, Noah Shakespeare, president of the Working Men's Protection Organization, which later became the Anti-Chinese Association, petitioned the federal government saying that Mongolian labor shouldn't be used to build a CPR. In 1880, the Caucasian population of British Columbia was about 35,000, but most of them worked in mining, fishing, and canning industries. This only left about 400 Caucasian workers available to work on the CPR. In 1882, Prime Minister John A. Macdonald said that if the people of British Columbia wanted the CPR to be built, no steps against Chinese labor could be taken. Even though many Caucasian Canadians resented the Chinese, they wanted the CPR to be built. You, get to work! Come on, we don't have all day! I can't believe we're getting paid a dollar for this. I know, but it's the best job we can have here. My brother's also trying to get here to Canada. It's who wants the job? Sometimes I wonder why we left. I don't understand. We get paid a dollar for risking our lives. Did you see how many people died just yesterday? All the other workers do simple tasks and get paid a dollar fifty or two dollars. That's double what we get paid. They have safer jobs and their equipment is provided for them. Come on, everybody in front. We got some rock to clear. You, work. I See, we're using explosives to clear tunnels, but they're just commanding us. We should have gotten used to this by now, the harsh treatment and the unfairness. Years ago, I thought others blaming us for taking away their jobs was bad. No, not him. Okay, okay, small accident. Of course it's hard for you people to use explosives. Come on. There were 9,000 railway workers and about 6,500 were Chinese. Hundreds of Chinese workers died due to accidents, winter cold, illness, and malnutrition. The federal government, under the pressure from British Columbia's government, imposed a $50 head tax on Chinese immigrants. Diplomats, merchants, students, tourists, and men of science were free from the head tax. The intention of the head tax was to prevent Chinese immigrants from coming to Canada.
His brother finally came to Canada. The head tax increased to $500. I don't know if it's worth it. Of course it is. Back in China, all we could get was $2 a month. Here we can get $225 each year. That's $18.75 a month. That's good money for his family. You're right. With him gone, somebody needs money. And with our support, there's a higher chance his brother will get in. When Chinese immigrants came to Canada, they were taken to immigration offices. They were medically examined, checked to see if they could pay the head tax, and if they had friends or relatives waiting for them here. This process could even take weeks. These Chinese people were confined in prison-like cells. So those were our early days here. Wow, Mom, I can't believe how much our ancestors went through. Connections are way better now, and we should definitely appreciate it. Thanks, Mom. I can't wait to present this to my class tomorrow.